Hello and welcome to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video we'll be answering the question where does a comma go between two verbs in a compound predicate? Let's not get confused. A compound predicate is when the subject of the sentence is doing more than one thing. That's why we have two or more verbs in that sentence. Let me give you an example. Gary sings and plays the flute. Very talented, Gary. So he sings and he plays the flute. I guess he doesn't do both those things at the same time. But it would be incorrect if I broke this sentence up like this. Gary sings, comma, and plays the flute. The thing is, we don't need to separate either of these verbs unless there's a change of meaning or a complete misunderstanding of who is doing what in the sentence. Now let me give you an example where we need a comma to show who is doing what. Each verb has been underlined. I'd like to work out with you as a detective what went on. Paige spotted the woman who walked in the shop and waved. So let me just talk you through what's just happened in the sentence. Paige noticed a woman who walked into the shop and she waved at that woman. Paige was the woman who waved at the other woman. If I took the comma away, from after the word shop, it looks as if the woman who was not Paige was waving at Paige. Yet with a comma, it clears up what Paige did by spotting the woman and waving at the woman. In essence, don't separate two verbs that appear together as a compound predicate with a comma unless it would be totally confusing for the reader without it. The example I just gave you is confusing without the comma. Now it's your turn. For each of the sentences, I want you to look closely at the use of the comma. Hit pause if you need thinking time to decide if each sentence has used the comma appropriately. So, how did you do? I ate, drank, and was merry. Good for you. I'm listing the verbs that include the things I did. I ate, I drank, and I was merry. So the use of the comma here is as if in a list. I have three items, and I put a comma between the first and the second, and I use and between the second and the third. So yes, this is absolutely correct. Ashley scratched and tickled the cat's head. This is also correct. I don't need to split up scratched and tickled. They're both verbs that Ashley led on when he was playing with the cat. And if I broke them up with a comma, I'd be confusing you as a reader as to why. This next one, Kim stroked the dog, comma, and rubbed its belly. Here, no comma is required. You can actually tell that by the fact that the dog is referred to as its later on. It should instead read, Kim stroked the dog and rubbed its belly. It's referring back to the dog as its, suggesting there should be nothing breaking it up in this part of the sentence. Shakira danced and sang to the beat and the audience cheered. So Shakira danced and sang, two verbs there that have not been split up because they are deciding and sharing with us what she is doing. And we learn what the audience did, they cheered. It makes sense that this is split up with a comma because we are now learning what Shakira did and what the audience did. 
but we're not splitting up the two verbs related to Shakira because that would be wrong. Finally, Wilson gave directions and walked on. That's what he did and it doesn't need a comma. Fundamentally, it's not great to split two verbs that the subject of the sentence is doing up with a comma, but if it would confuse readers for us not to add a comma because there are more than one potential meaning, for example, we must add a comma for clarity's sake. English gra grammar is all about clarity, so don't get overwhelmed by it if you believe that a comma causes less confusion than it creates one, try it out in the sentence. Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical?